Hey guys, what's going on? In today's video, we're gonna go over the absolute must-haves that you should carry with you when riding your snowmobile in the backcountry. Let's get right into it. So right now it's currently August. It's about 95 degrees outside my shop here. It is absolutely blistering. Seems like this time of year, everyone gets amped up. They start planning their sled builds. They start getting their gear rounded up and they start planning their sled trip. I thought this would be a perfect time to talk about what I carry as a backcountry snowmobile guide here in Wyoming. I put on over 2,000 miles a season. I guide clients from all over the world. A lot of guys from Minnesota, Michigan, Wisconsin. This isn't an exact science. These are just things that I've picked up over the years. Of course, I'm always looking at improving my gear list and things that I carry. And I wouldn't have gotten to the list that I got today without the help of people that have been doing this for a really long time. I've even seen some of my clients carry some of this and I thought that was a great idea. Again, just as a reminder, this is an overview video. I could dive into the specifics of a lot of this stuff and do videos on just that one piece. The goal of this video is to one, get you thinking about winter, and two, this is to inspire you to do your own research, and hopefully when I name some stuff off, you'll go look into it yourselves. I have three categories that I wanna go into here. The first category that we're gonna dive into is riding gear, what I wear head to toe, that's on me personally. The second thing is, and I have my little list here. It's a lot to remember, so that's what this piece of paper is for. The third thing is what I carry on my backpack, and then the fourth thing is what I carry on my sled. So I have a reason for why I carry things where I do, and I'll dive into that. So those are the three categories. There's two things that I couldn't really fit into a category, and those two things are a way to track where you're at without cell service, and two, a satellite communicator. It's like a cheat code, having a guide, and someone that has the app called Onyx. It opens up endless possibilities for us. I can go into nooks and crannies that I never knew were there. And another thing that I like to carry since there is no cell service up there is a satellite communicator. And for that, I use Zolio. You'll see a lot of guys use a Garmin inReach. That's great. Um, at the time, Zolio just seemed more affordable. It has not let me down yet. So I like to wear a pair of long underwear. Um, these are the 509 level one base layers. Um, they just make me feel athletic and mobile in the backcountry. And then what I'll pair with this is maybe a pair of like jogging pants or something uh, and layer up that way. It just, I like loose fitting clothes um, underneath my mono suit. It just keeps me, it just makes me feel athletic and mobile. For a base layer, I wear the Frozen Level 1 shirt by 509. Um, I avoid cotton at all costs because cotton is, cotton kills, um, especially in the cold backcountry if you start sweating and then something happens where you have to stay overnight or whatever reason you stop moving, that cotton can freeze. So I wear something that dries super quickly, it's breathable, and also keeps you warm. And then for a mid-layer, I do the Frozen Level 2 jacket. I actually like to use this pocket here to keep, sometimes I keep my phone in there, I'll keep my wallet or just miscellaneous things, extra GoPro batteries, that sort of thing, I'll put in there, and then it's just a good, I also like to just wear this casually too. So super nice, comfortable. Um, 509 level two, frozen level two. So that's pretty much what I wear most of the time uh, when it's anywhere from 20 to 25 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, if it gets super cold and I'm out there in like five degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees, even negatives, um, I'll throw on a puffer jacket. Okay, so now that we got the base layers covered and the mid layers, um, what I wear on the outside is I wear this BC Aspect one piece suit by Skidoo. Skidoo did send me this BC Aspect mono suit to test out. I've been testing them for the last two years and I've come to really like them. It's just great technology. It's Sympatex, 100% waterproof, super lightweight. It's breathable. I can layer up. I really like doing the layering system. Uh, and one of my favorite things about the BC Aspect uh, mono suit is just how stretchy it is. It makes me feel really agile out there. I've never had a problem where I felt like it was limiting my mobility. And another nice little touch about the BC Aspect one piece suit is it has dedicated beacon pockets. Um, so I actually keep my beacon right here. And the beacon that I run is the BCA Tracker 4. One thing I did forget to mention that I like to wear as an aggressive backcountry rider <laughs> is I like to wear a uh, chest protector. Now this one is a super cheap old chest protector that I bought way back in the day uh, that I've been running for years now. Uh, there's been lots of times where I've been riding through the trees and a branch poked out and smoked me. And uh, without the chest protector, it probably would have been would have been catastrophic. Let's talk about the helmet that I run. I run the Pyra helmet. Again, Skidoo has asked me to test their new gear out. What I really, really like about the Pyra 
is that it is super breathable. I don't feel like when I do something that causes me to get winded that I have to rip it off to breathe. I can keep my helmet on and still breathe pretty good. And it keeps you pretty warm. I've done 20 mile trail rides going to lodges before and uh, didn't really have a problem. For goggles, I run three different pairs. The most affordable pair that I run are just these Ski-Doo trench goggles. I run the clear lenses on them for uh, cloudy days or snowy days. When it's low visibility, uh, the clear goggles are the way to go. But to this day, my favorite pair of goggles are these 509 Sinister goggles. They've got these little battery packs on them that actually keep them from fogging up, which if you've ever rode a super epic deep day with tons of fresh pow and it's still snowing, it just sucks to have your day ruined because you can't see at all and these 509s just, they solve that problem and they keep your goggles from fogging. They are expensive, absolutely worth it. So for boots, I run these uh, Skidoo Tech boots. I was not asked to test these out. I actually purchased these with my own money. About every year I go through a pair of boots. It's the way I ride on my running boards, the running boards just chew them up. I've had FXR, I've had 509, and they only lasted one season before they were completely ripped to shreds. And so these Skidoo boots have kept me super warm. They seem to handle the abuse a lot better. I can probably run these again for another season so I can get at least two seasons out of these instead of just one. And uh, they don't have the BOA system on them, but I'll take that over them being torn to shreds every single season. So yeah, just, and they're affordable boots. So these Skidoo Tech boots are absolutely amazing. So for gloves, I carry three pairs of gloves with me, sometimes more. Um, usually I start out uh, early in the mornings or on the trail. I'll start with these uh, BC Aspect long gloves. I really like these because they can compress around your wrist and just keep snow out of there. They keep you warm. But usually once those gloves get either super sweaty on the inside or they're wet, um, I'll run these Skidoo Mountain Gloves. These are kind of like medium warmth gloves. They're too hot for spring days. They're a little too cold for those early morning trail rides. Uh, they're kind of your middle of the day, first pair you switch into gloves. And then from there, I'll just carry a, some miscellaneous gloves that I have laying around. A lot of people actually, they'll take mittens with them. That's definitely an option. Some of my guides have mittens. Uh, it's just something that I haven't put in my pack yet. And then a couple of miscellaneous things that I carry uh, on my body with my mono suit. Um, I carry a neck gaiter uh, that just helps with wind, especially on the trail, super cold days. And then if we're sitting there having lunch, I can put um, a beanie on and my neck gaiter just keeps me warm. Okay, so that covers what's on my body and my riding gear. So now uh, the next thing that I wanna move on to is what I carry on my backpack. So super important. I run the Climb Aspect 16. This is an avalanche air bag. It's got a trigger here. So in the event of an avalanche, hold this trigger. It helps me stay afloat hopefully and it gives me a larger mass. Um, if you haven't looked into an avalanche backpack, you definitely should. There's a lot of great videos on them and why you should have one. The reason why I went with the Climb Aspect is for its recharging capabilities. It is one of the most expensive packs on there. I don't want to. I didn't want to go with the canister because I'm oftentimes demonstrating to people how this works. So I like to be able to just charge it every single day, um, and then it's super easy to pack. So now what I carry on the inside, we're going to go ahead and start with this first pouch here. I carry a saw with me. A saw is super crucial. It is one of the tools that I use the most in the backcountry for myself and clients uh, when you're tree riding. The reason why I carry it on my backpack is because there's, uh, I once jumped on a friend's sled, got stuck, realized I kept my saw in my tunnel bag and I didn't have a saw. And so that was a total bummer. Now my saw lives in my backpack. I have three different ways to start a fire with me. I'll show you one of my favorite ways here in a minute. Uh, another thing I carry with me is my paperwork as a backcountry guide. I have to carry uh, my permit with the Forest Service. And then another thing that I have in this little pouch is I have heat blankets um, to create a fire and then I have toe warmers. Uh, the next little pocket I have is the goggle pocket and I actually call this my vision pocket. I'll carry an extra pair of goggles in here. And then I'll also carry this uh, Mountain Lab uh, headlamp which goes on a GoPro mount on my helmet. It's 1800 lumens. This is great. I've helped on search and rescue missions. And this little tool here is absolutely, it's so bright and it's so cool to have. So now we'll go into this pocket here with the red tabs. This is my avalanche pocket, I call it. So you could put a probe in here. I carry my shovel in here. There's a whole, you could do a whole video on what kind of shovel to carry. Uh, you wanna carry one that's heavy duty. Avalanche debris can be like concrete. So make sure you have a super heavy duty shovel in your backpack. What I carry in this main pocket here is a first aid kit. Um, that's the first thing that I can pull out. I have this ready to go. The reason why I keep it in my backpack is so I can jump off my sled or for whatever reason my sled is doing whatever it does. Uh, I have 
a first aid kit, or if I'm on a buddy sled and I need to get to someone quick, the first aid kit is on my body. So first aid kit, you could do a whole video on what's in here. Um, there's a couple essentials. There's lots of great videos on what you should carry for uh, winter recreation and the first aid kit. And then I have an extra beanie in here. I have two beanies, So first aid kit, beanie, um, and then a bunch of extra gloves that I keep in here. And then also uh, when I'm going out for a ride, I'll keep uh, a bottle of water in here or my food. Um, and then maybe some other miscellaneous stuff. I also leave room to put my layers in here. So I try to keep my backpack as light as I can, uh, just to, being on my back all day. Even this one uh, can get a little heavy. I like this backpack because it has a really, really fancy quick release. I like to use my probe just to measure the snow all the time. It's just a fun little tool to have. So I'll pull it here, whip it out of here. And then I have this probe. Um, I think this is a BCA probe. Yeah, it's the BCA Stealth 240 Carbon. Uh, I like this probe a lot. Yeah, another thing with this pack is one, I'll put my radio in here. Sometimes I'll put my Zolio. I'll put my Zolio in one of these hip pouches. So I really like those hip pouches. And uh, I really like keeping my radio clipped on right here. Just super, ac super easy access. Uh, the radio that I run is actually the BCA um, 1.0s. Um, I tried the 2.0s and I've tried Oxbow. For whatever reason, the 1.0s just, uh, I don't know, they're old reliable. They've worked great. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, so. Last thing that I want to cover is what I carry on. This is what I carry on my snowmobile. So this is the Link Tunnel Bag by Skidoo. I'll post a link to all the stuff that I carry in the description. The reason why I like this one is just it's got this roll top, which it can, this thing gets massive. So this is pretty heavy, I'm not gonna lie. Um, if I had to guess, I mean, it's, it's probably 18 pounds, um, which isn't terrible. Uh, but I've got a lot in here. The heaviest thing that I have in here, um, we'll just start off with what I keep in here, is I keep all my spare tools in here. So I've got this little climb bag. It's got wrenches, it's got torques in here. Uh, it's got spring pullers, screwdrivers, crescent wrench, Allen keys, all sorts of stuff. I've got JB weld in here. When you're riding with Polaris clients, you gotta keep all the tools on you. <laughs> Oh, don't kill me, Polaris guys. That was a joke. I've been towed out plenty of times. I love you, Polaris guys. I'm just going to pull it out of here. It's going to be kind of random. Uh, so another thing that I carry in here is a metal water or liquids container. The reason why I do metal is because if you do if something does happen at night, you don't want your liquids to freeze. You can put this by a fire. The fire will warm it up. And you can put hot chocolate in here, tea, whatever you want to put in here. It's nice to have a hot beverage on a cold day. Little secret of mine, one of my favorite tools to carry you know, that you don't see a lot of people carry is I carry a little torch. I use this little torch a lot to start fires, to warm up tape uh, when you break a vent on a sled. Uh, for some reason, I find myself using the torch a lot. Um, it's just super nice. And plus, if you have to start a fire, it's like a cheat code. Uh, so because I rely on the torch so much, I actually carry extra fuel with it. I don't mess around with fire, okay? I've got three different ways to start a fire. The torch is my favorite. Uh, the next thing I got here is actually a uh, triangular saw. And this was gifted to me by a client that brought one out. I saw him use it on a big old log. I mean, you could cut a whole forest down with this. Uh, this one is super, super awesome to have if you find yourself stuck against a ginormous tree. Uh, I'll use the little handsaw for trees that are about beer can size. Uh, if you get into a situation where you need to cut down a huge log, this triangular saw is awesome. Another thing I carry is Gorilla Tape. This is super just convenient to have. I've poked holes and vents before and you can just use that. Here is some AAA batteries, extra batteries. Here's a cord to charge things. Uh, just super awesome to have. I've had clients come up before and uh, they thought their beacons had batteries. Their beacon did not, so I had extra batteries. I was able to put batteries in their beacon for them so their day wasn't ruined. Um, I have some paracord. Paracord's nice for when you break A-arms. Polaris guys, just kidding. Um, and then here are some zip ties for more broken parts. Here is some SAM splint. One of the things that they tell you to carry for wilderness first aid and CPR is um, SAM splint. It's super nice for fractures, uh, keeping things straight. So SAM splint, I haven't had to use it luckily. And then another thing for search and rescue and just shelter, I carry a light duty tarp. Haven't had to use this yet either. Uh, a tarp would just be something nice to have if you get stuck overnight in a blizzard. 
Um, or if someone gets hurt, you can comfort them more with a, with a tarp. Extra socks, just as an emergency. It's a nice pair of dry socks. Everything's in a Ziploc bag to keep them dry in here. The last things I'll throw in this bag is I'll have usually a big old bag of trail mix, just extra food. Uh, so yeah, oh, that, I know that was a lot that covers it. Uh, that's everything that I carry. Every I've seen people carry other stuff. I'm sure I'm missing some things. Uh, some of these are ultra essential. I would label them. Others are kind of more comforts. This is what I carry as a guide in Wyoming. You know, sometimes you're at the minimum hours away from any sort of help or even it can take days. It just depends on the weather, depends on the, the situation. This isn't a video to scare you. It's just, these are things that make me more comfortable in the backcountry. because to be honest, I fear the mountains and I think everyone should fear the mountains. They're an intimidating place. And I think if you fear something, you also respect something. So I respect the mountains heavily. I think part of respecting them is coming prepared. I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you're stoked for uh, winter. If you're still watching at this point of the video, we're actually going to heydays. This will be our first trip ever to Heydays. So if you're um, in Min North Branch, Minnesota, you're going to Heydays. Uh, we're gonna be sharing a booth with Deviant Inc. I uh, hope to see you there. Let's talk about what you carry in the backcountry. Let's talk sleds, just talk anything, say hello. Uh, we just wanna hang out and uh, be surrounded by like-minded people. So yeah, come see us at Heydays. Thanks for watching guys. Let us know in the comments what you like to carry. I always love to have these open discussions and uh, we'll catch you in the next video. Woo, that was a lot.